Hey guys, it's Jeremy here at Middle Music Meltdown back with another video. What do you have for today, guys? It's the next episode of my top 10 albums of each year. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And what I've been doing is I started back in 1970 and I worked worked my way through each year up until present date. Uh, the 70s, I only did the top five. And then when I got into the 80s, I bumped it up to top 10. And I'm like I said, I'm working my way through the years and just selecting my top 10 favorite albums of each year. Uh, so I'm up to 1992 for this episode and honestly the 90s was a rough period for metal and out of all the years I've done so far from 70 till now uh, this by far was the hardest one to find uh, the 10 albums. Uh, there wasn't as much good stuff this year it was kind of a weaker year in general uh, but I found 10 albums that I really enjoy still and let's jump right in. Uh, so number 10 guys I have uh, Deicide's second album uh, Legion um, great album, um, kind of squeaked in the bottom of my list. I'm not the, as big of a death metal uh, fan, but I do love the older stuff, and Deicide's first couple albums are really solid. Uh, standout tracks, uh, probably Tricks Fiction, uh, Repented to Die, and uh, Dead But Dreaming is uh, the other track I would probably pick from that album. At number nine, I'm gonna go with Dream Theater, uh, Images and Words. It's their second studio album from the American Progressive Metalers. I'm not the biggest Dream Theater fan. I love their musicianship and things about the band, but it's never a band I really latched onto, but this, in my opinion, is one of their great albums. Um, really good progressive metal and a lot of solid uh, instrumentation and lyrics. And for Stando tracks, uh, Pull Me Under, Another Day, and probably Metropolis uh, would be the other one I would pick from that album. And at number eight, I'm going with the debut record from Rage Against the Machine. Uh, very cool band, very different. Tom Morello did a lot of experimental stuff on his uh, guitar. Uh, very different and cool. And then their lyrics were very political and had a, a lot of hip-hop influence. Um, standard tracks, of course, uh, Killing in the Name. That's a beast of a song. Always gets you amped up and really uh, fired up. And uh, Bomb Track, uh, Wake Up, uh, Bullet in the Head, just a lot of good tunes on that debut, really good stuff. And at number seven, I have Iron Maiden, Fear of the Dark. Another one of the more popular Iron Maiden albums, but I still enjoy it. There's some really solid tracks in here. Uh, the title track I love, it's obviously a live staple in their set list, but I love the title track. Uh, be Quick or Be Dead is good as well. Wasting Love is really good as well. Uh, but the title track for this album really does it for me. Still a solid album from Maiden. Not one of their best, but uh, pretty decent. And at number six, I have Pantera, Vulgo Dis Display of Power. Um, Pantera is a pretty cool band. They're more groove. Um, I was never a massive Pantera fan. Um, in the 90s, I was kind of more listening to... Honestly, at the time, at the time, I was listening to grunge and alternative and just starting to get into metal. So I was really into Metallica. Um, I was listening to a lot of ACDC, but my first um, uh, metal I got into and went back at a younger age was Thrash. So Pantera was kind of under the radar for me, even though technically in the 90s, they were by far the biggest metal band, uh, keeping the flame alive. But this is still a really solid album. I really enjoy it. Um, standard tracks, uh, Mouth for War, uh, This Love, uh, Live in a Hole, Fucking Hostile, Walk, of course, is a big one. Walk is a huge song. Uh, pretty solid album. I like it. I uh, still enjoy it from time to time. And definitely one of their, one of classic album from these guys. And at number five, I have Sodom, German Thrashers, with their fifth studio album uh, entitled Tapping the Vein. Love Sodom stuff, one of the more consistent thrash bands in history. Always very heavy and abrasive and more raw than the American um, Bay Area thrash, in my opinion. Uh, standout tracks, body parts, uh, deadline, bullet in the head. Really solid album, top to bottom. I still really enjoy this album. Definitely one of their the stronger albums in the early 90s. And at number four, I have uh, Megadeth, uh, Countdown to Extinction. This is their fifth studio album through Capitol Records, and it would be the uh, second one in their lineup with the classic Dave Mustaine, Marty Freeman, Dave Elfson, and Nick uh, Menza. 
Uh, really good lineup on this uh, era of Megadeth. Marty Freeman is the best uh, guitarist they had, in my opinion. Uh, standout tracks for me would be uh, Symphony for Dest of Destruction, Skid of My Teeth, and For Closure of a Dream. Sweating Bullets is a big song on that album, but it was never, I maybe it's just overplayed. I just kind of got sick of it. I don't really go back to that song too much anymore, but still a really solid Megadeth album for the 90s. I really enjoy it. At number three, I have uh, March or Die by uh, the Mighty Motorhead. Fucking love Motorhead. One of my favorite bands of all time. Um, this is the uh, second uh, album by the band. Not second album, sorry. Second and final album with rec uh, WTG Records. And uh, had some guest appearances on this record as well. From Ozzy, Guns N' Roses, Guitar Slash. And uh, Tommy Aldridge on drums. Um, this is shortly after they kind of released Phil Taylor uh, early in the recording sessions. Um, this is their 10th studio album. I personally love everything Motorhead does. I really do enjoy this album. It's not one of their classic early albums, but everything they put out is solid. I always enjoy all of it. People complain saying it's like ACDC, like they re re um, recorded the same album like 20 times. In my opinion, I'm perfectly fine with that because their formula works and it sounds amazing. It's kick ass and it's just heavy and fucking rest in peace, Lemmy. Um, fucking Motorhead was the shit. Uh, definitely one of my top five bands of all time. Love all their stuff. And number two, another one of my favorite bands, uh, The Mighty Testament with The Ritual. This is the fifth studio album. Um, this album had a different sound for Testament, but I still really enjoyed it. I love all their stuff too as well. Uh, Standout Tracks, Electric Crown, The Ritual title track, and Agony, I'd, I'd say was the other one. Again, another solid album from these guys. Not one of my favorites, but uh, for this year, it was a standout album for me still. It was really, really good. Um, just before I list my number one, just some quick honorable mentions. Just gonna run down the album releases from this year. Alice in Chains' Dirt was a really solid album. Didn't quite make the list. Amorphous had an album this year, At the Gates. Uh, Autopsy. It's kind of rolling through the list here, quick guys. Um, uh, Cannibal Corpse, Tomb of the Mutilated, uh, just barely didn't make my list. Very good album as well. And let me see here. Obituary had an album this year, which was decent. Uh, Creator had one out this year. Uh, Fear Factory, just kind of a mix of stuff, but um, Hypocrisy. But nothing overly that overly stood out that's being really killer in my opinion. Like I said, it was one of the weaker years in metal, unfortunately, but uh, still some uh, some decent stuff. And for my number one, guys, I had to put uh, Black Sabbath Dehumanizer. Um, this is the return of Ronnie James Dio in the lineup for the one album, and it's fucking killer. It's really heavy. It still sounds has more of an evil sound again. Uh, one of my favorite Black Sabbath albums, I love all the D, uh, Dio albums, and this one's killer. It's definitely underrated in my opinion. It's up there in discussion. Uh, not quite as good as Mob Rules and Heaven in Hell, but it's definitely better than a lot of the Aussie era albums in my opinion. Really killer album, I love this one. As soon as I saw this was in this year, I'm bad with dates, I knew this was going to be my number one right away. Uh, standard tracks, Computer God, TV Crimes, and probably Time Machine, but the whole album top to bottom is killer, and I really enjoy it. So let me know down below, guys, what your favorite albums from 1992 are, um, if there's anything I missed, maybe, overlooked, and uh, what did you think of my picks. And also stay tuned for 1993. I promise won't be as long until the next episode. I think I did 91, 1991 like three weeks ago, so it's been a little bit of time. I try to put one of these out every week or two until I finally get caught up uh, to the present date. Uh, but again, guys, let me know down below what your albums of the year would be. And stay tuned for the next episode. Keep it metal.